So today I want to go over boron and its many functions, including reducing inflammation and increasing hormone health, such as testosterone and lowering estrogen as well. So boron is a metalloid. It has both metal and non-metal characteristics. Functions of boron include cell wall strength and development, hormone development, fruit and seed development, sugar transport, and cell division. Now that we've briefly gone over boron's biography, let's take a look at some of boron's benefits. So like I said previously, the main things I wanna go over is boron's ability to reduce inflammation, improve bone and joint health, improve neuron health, and improve hormone health. So let's take a look at some studies. Now the first trial we're gonna look at is a very small trial consisting of only eight patients. Now I know what you're thinking, only eight patients, that's very tiny and that's true. It's not even a full football team, but the results are, you know, they're not bad. So let's take a look and see what we can get. So 11.6 milligrams of boron led to a decrease in CRP, TNF alpha and IL-6 levels six hours and one week after supplementation. Now CRP, IL-6 and TNF alpha, these are all inflammatory biomarkers. This is what we can check to see if the body has inflammation in it. So increased values in the labs for these biomarkers, CRP, TNF alpha and IL-6, that means there's increased inflammation inside of the body. So if we give medication or supplementation and it reduces those levels, then we know that we have reduced inflammation. Now inflammation is not something that someone's gonna compliment you on, right? They're not gonna look at you and go, oh wow, you look so great, you've lost so much inflammation. Most likely no one's gonna say that to you, but inflammation is directly linked with cardiovascular diseases. So if we can reduce inflammation, we can reduce cardiovascular disease risk. And now another study on bone and joint health. This one moved up in the ranks, has 20 participants. So we can actually play a full game of football now. So there was 10 people taking six milligrams of boron and 10 people taking placebo. Now five people in the boron group improved in their symptoms and five did not, but only one person improved in their symptoms in the placebo and nine did not. Now a 50% success rate is not too great, but there was a difference in supplementing with boron. So we can see that boron has has properties in reducing inflammation in both the first study and in this study. So these are things that we can look into more with boron and see where it goes in the future. Now I kind of want to switch gears and go over hormone health. Now we're going to look at that first study again, the one that almost had a full football team, only eight participants. Now again, these participants took 11.6 milligrams of boron and we saw a 14% increase in free testosterone, 10% increase in DHT and a 9% increase in sex hormone binding globulin. Now free testosterone is the amount of testosterone that's able to flow around the blood freely and go to its target sites and have its effect on the body. DHT is what is made from testosterone. So if we're able to make more DHT, that means we utilize more testosterone. Now we want less of sex hormone binding globulin because this binds to the testosterone and doesn't let it go and do its job. So it kind of restricts and you know, cages in that testosterone and doesn't let it go to where it needs to go. And after six hours, we saw a 14% increase in testosterone and a 9% decrease in SHBG. And after seven days of supplementation, we saw a 28% increase in free testosterone. There was no change in the sex hormone binding globulin, but there was a 39% decrease in estrogen. Now I'll go over the estrogen results in a different study in a little bit because the results were a little bit different. But in terms of testosterone and sex hormone binding globulin, this is a good study because it showed that it was an increase in free testosterone and a decrease in sex hormone binding globulin after six hours and after one week. So we have promising results here. Now, boron is not gonna increase your testosterone so much that you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime after two weeks of supplementing. But according to these studies, boron can help you get closer to looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Lord knows you need it. Now here's another study that I wanna go over which is kind of conflicting in its results with the previous study. This was after four weeks of supplementation. The other one was only after one week, but this one is after four weeks. So we see a tiny increase in plasma testosterone, but this was not found to be statistically significant. And there was also a 42% increase in estrogen that was significant. So in the other study, we mentioned that estrogen decreases after seven days, but in this one, it increased after four weeks. So it's possible that in the beginning, estrogen decreases and testosterone goes goes up, but after four weeks, maybe the estrogen kind of starts increasing and then the testosterone kind of normalizes. So in terms of the dosing, which I'll go over in a little bit, might be better to cycle on and off this medication so that you don't build any tolerance and raise your estrogen levels. Now with boron, we've had all this talk about testosterone, but here is one for the ladies. 118 women with premenstrual cramps took 10 milligrams of elemental boron daily for two cycles. Statistically significant decrease in pain severity and duration. What female wouldn't want that? You get less pain and less duration of symptoms during your period. 
life is good. Now let's go over dosing real quick. So there's a recommended daily intake, which is about three milligrams per day, I believe, something around there. The deficiency is around 1.5 milligrams. And then the toxic level is anything above 20 milligrams. Although there hasn't been any real toxicity reports with boron, the upper limit is still set to 20 milligrams. So you probably shouldn't be supplementing anything more than 20 milligrams. And there's not really a need for that anyway, because if you're going based off of these results, then around 10 milligrams is kind of the sweet spot that you would want to be at with boron. Now it's been said that with boron, three to six milligrams daily is what's used for inflammation. And then a little bit higher doses, 10 milligrams is what's used for the sexual health benefits, such as the increase in testosterone and stuff like that. Now, if you want to focus on increasing your testosterone and not worrying about the increase in estrogen, then you might want to cycle with boron, as I mentioned earlier. So taking something like two weeks on and two weeks off is a good you know, uh, dosing schedule for boron. Also testosterone peaks in the morning. So it might be a good idea to take it in the afternoon or kind of in the evening where testosterone levels are lower so that you can kind of boost your testosterone levels um, at that time instead of taking it when it's already at its peak. And then with food, boron doesn't necessarily matter to take it with or without food. Now, anytime you supplement with anything, especially things that mess with your hormones, such as testosterone and estrogen and things like that, you for sure want to get a blood test and see where your levels are at baseline. So you know kind of what your starting point is. And then after a few weeks, you test again and see what the supplement has done to your hormone levels or just kind of any of your blood values, because you want to make sure that you're not taking too much or too little and that it's effective and not in the toxic range. So always remember to take blood tests consistently so that you can measure your levels and see what the supplement is doing to your body. Ignorance is not bliss when it comes to your health. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content and I'll see you next time.